Hello again, performance management students. Steve Willis here, like usual. In this video, I'm going to help you pass your upcoming PM exam. I'm gonna take you through time series analysis. We'll do a past exam question together. I'll show you the spreadsheet exam technique. Let's get started. Performance management students, let's review the concept of time series analysis in the context of a past exam question. I'm going to take you through question sauce. This is an oldie, but it's a goodie. As of this recording date, we don't have any time series analysis questions in the computer-based exams, so I'm going to use this question that's about 10 years old to take you through the exam technique that you need. At this point, download the question. The link is right here. It's also down in the description. Download that question, pause the video, see how far you can get on your own, and then press play and continue watching. Welcome back. As you can see, I'm in the ACCA spreadsheet tool. Whenever I'm doing a time series analysis, I'm going to get organized with a standard set of columns. And the columns that I'm going to start with, I need a year, I need a quarter, and I need a time series. I need some data. Double click there. We have three years. We got 2010. We've got two, th two quarters in 2010. Then we've got 2011 for four quarters. I'll copy that three more times. And then four quarters for 2012. Let's add the quarters. We start with quarter three and then quarter four. Then it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yes, I could have copy pasted that, but it was just faster to type it out. And there's an important reason why I left that blank row in between my data, which you'll see in a moment. Now, let's add the time series data that is given to us in the question. We're just going to type that in. We've got a 900, 1100. One, two, zero, zero. I'll fill in the rest. And let's not lose sight of our mission. We are looking to roll the forecast two quarters into the future. So just those two. I've got these basic columns set up. Now, the question actually gave you the moving average. And remember, this is an older question when we didn't have spreadsheets. But in a newer question, if it were to come up in section C, absolutely, they would make you do more of the work. So I'm going to make a new column to show you how they got the moving average. I'm just going to find four of my time series data. And then in between, right in the middle there, I'll do a an average function. And I can just grab those four cells. And there we have it. I will copy that. Into the remaining cells where we have the four. As you know, there are no marks for formatting, but let's apply a consistent formatting to that column just so it looks a little prettier. There we have it. After we have a moving average, now we can do the centered moving average. So we have one of the averages lined up perfectly with the quarters. Right now, this annual moving average is right in between two of the quarters. So we want to line it up right on the quarter. And this is actually the data that was given to you in the question, the centered moving average. That will be, again, we can use that same 
average function, just type out that word average, grab two cells, and let's copy that down. Now we have the centered moving average. I'd like to recap that those figures were actually given to you in the question. I'm just showing you how they would have been calculated. And the question then gives us the centered moving average for the next two quarters. We can't calculate that because we don't have enough data in our time series, but it's given to us. So I just plug in the figures that are given to me. That's a 1243.75 and a 1287.5. There we have it the centered moving average. I showed you how to calculate it. And just remember, in this past exam question, all of that is given to you. The next column that we're going to need is the seasonal variation. Let's remember they want the multiplicative, if I can spell that, the multiplicative approach, if I can say that. What's the difference between the multiplicative and the additive? Let me show you quickly. If I have my trend moving into the future, that's time, that's some units or some dollars, that's my trend. If we're looking at an additive time series, it's gonna be looking like this, constant, into the future, plus minus the same amount. If we're looking at a multiplicative model, the swings, the amplitude is going to grow as it grow as the time series grows. Okay, the seasonal variation grows. That's just an approximation, guys. That's the multiplicative model right there. So to calculate that, it will be the time series divided by the centered moving average. And we can't read that column, so let's immediately add a little formatting. And we can copy that. Down. There is a note in this question. Remember, it's an older question. They wanted you on paper to calculate that seasonal variation to four decimal places. So let's just be precise. If you got such a request in the computer-based exams, we'd have to go to custom here. And then we would go to number and we can use this style. We'll use the thousand separator and then I'm going to put my cursor right into that spot, put a decimal place and add some more hash marks to show the number of decimal places I want. Period, one, two, three, four hash marks. And we'll use the same approach with the next two rows. Okay, there you go. That is how we would calculate the seasonal variation if we needed to. However, once again, in the question, they actually gave it to us. They said in quarter three, 2012, it's 0 0.9087. And in quarter four, it's 1.0827. Now that our seasonal variation is in play, we can make a final column for forecast. And again, we're only going for the end of 2012. So we need to roll our centered moving average here two quarters into the future. So I'm going to make a working on the side here. That'll be the average growth of the centered moving average. And I'll do it in a very simple way. I'm going to take the last piece of data we have, the 12875. I will then subtract the smallest number that we get. And that's the difference. And 
that difference occurred over five changes from quarter one, 2011, to quarter two, 2012. A common mistake is to do it by six, divide by six, but it's really five changes. So now I divide that by five. Let's use brackets to preserve the order of operations. And, at this point, we just add that 43.75 to the last item in my centered moving average right there. Do the same thing, equals this one plus this, and we are good to go. So the forecast would then be equal to cell F19, the centered moving average, and then we apply that seasonal variation. In quarter three, it's lower. In quarter four, it's higher. Maybe that's some kind of a Christmas seasonality. Grab those. Okay, we cannot read that, so let's just format our answer. And there we have it. Friends, there you have it. This is the almost perfect solution. This would get you nine out of the 10 marks. However, for the sake of completeness, I'll take you through this final mark. And it's a real example of diminishing returns on your time. This is gonna be a lot of work. It's not worth the effort for one final mark. But let's do it. What I am going to do is fix my seasonal variation, and it's easier if I show you than talk about it. So I'm going to call this the adjusted seasonal variation. I'll make a section here. And we've got four quarters. So let's make a column for quarter. One, two, three, four. Now I am skipping rows so I can make one formula and copy that. So I'm saving time. I'll use that relative cell addressing trick when we're using spreadsheets. Now I need the average seasonal variation. I'll open up the equal sign. I'll write the word average to show that that is a function. I'm gonna grab the first quarter one. I'll put a comma and I'll grab the second quarter one. There it is. I'll format all of that when I'm done. And because I'm using, I've got that space, I've got that extra row, I can just copy that, paste it, paste it, paste it. Let's fix this. Let's be precise. Let's show that seasonal variation to the four decimal places. So let me just, well, I'll format, I'll go down a couple of more lines here. I'll grab my formatting button. I'll go custom. I hit return. And there we have it to four decimal places. Now, if this were a perfect time series, the total should come to four. Okay, equals the sum of these seasonal variations. The upward swings should be equal to the downward swings, and it isn't. So we're going to get that difference, right? That 0 0.064, the difference versus four, for lack of a better row title, that will be equal to the 4.0064 minus four, even four. And then we need to divide that by four to get the quarterly difference. And 
that will be equal to this to the 0064 divided by 4. Last thing we can do then is adjust that seasonal variation. Essentially what I'm doing, I'd like the total of my seasonal variations to be equal to 4. So I've split the 64 into 16 and I'll adjust each quarter by 16. less 0 0.0016. These are tiny numbers. And so let's just use the equal sign. That one minus cell J21. Let me use dollar sign to lock that in absolute so that I can copy it down nice and quickly. Dollar to the row, dollar to the column. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Again, let's fix the formatting. Custom. It kept my previous formatting there, so that's nice. And there we have it. So for one, this was worth one mark in this old exam question, doing the getting the adjusted average seasonal variation. So if I wanted to make this perfect, I'd make a little note to the marking team. And let's copy paste those years and quarters. Copy. Let's copy the centered moving average from those two years. It'll be equal to that. And that. Let's now use the adjusted seasonal variation, which we'll grab from column K. I want three and four. This one. And this one. Let's apply that formatting again. I don't like to format the whole spreadsheet it, because this is a web-based spreadsheet. It can take a long time to, to format the whole spreadsheet. It's slower than Excel, so I'm doing it range by range as needed. And that will be equal to column F multiplied by column G, copy that down, format that. I could have formatted all of that, but hindsight is 2020. Performance management students, there you have it. Time series analysis. I took you through the easy nine marks and then we went through the difficult last one mark. Remember, there's always the own figure rule in effect when you're working in section C. So if there were a mistake anywhere along the way, you wouldn't be punished more than once. Your figure would be assumed correct for the rest of the work. That's why I wouldn't go for that final one mark. I would have just left it as I showed you and moved on to another question. PM students, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you have a better understanding of time series analysis now. If you liked the video, please throw down a like. Please subscribe to the channel. You can get more videos right to your inbox. Guys, good luck on your upcoming PM exam. This is Steve signing out for now.